There are over 500,000 kids in foster care across the United States, and making sure they're well taken care of takes a village. I'm Erin Lindstrom, and this is Foster Care Aware, a production brought to you by Tidewater Friends of Foster Care with support from the Barry Robinson Center. If you've had it on your heart to become a foster parent, volunteer, donor, advocate, or just want to learn more, you're in the right place. For more information on how to move forward, head to fostercareaware.org slash next steps. And now I'm thrilled to share today's segment with you. Hey, I am Erin Lindstrom, and I am joined by Audra Bullock, the president and director of Tidewater Friends of Foster Care, and Shannon McFadden, the resources family coordinator for Portsmouth Department of Social Services. Shannon, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Yeah, we're excited to chat with you. Um, to start us off, I know there are approximately 40 kids in foster care in Portsmouth. Can you tell us, like, it, what is your need for foster parents right now? Right now, we are definitely in need of some good homes, homes that are going to be um, committed and dedicated to working with some of our children through some of their difficult times. Um, currently, our foster care population consists of a lot of teenagers, so we would really appreciate um, people to apply that are willing to work with some of our older children and just provide them with that guidance, teaching, and nurturing that any teenager needs through those important years. That's that's really amazing. And yeah, I, it's such an important population to serve. And I think that there are, are families out there maybe that are sending their own kids off to college that are probably well prepared to take care of teens. But tell us a little bit more about what specific attributes makes a successful foster parent in your eyes? In my eyes, a successful foster parent is somebody who is, like I said before, definitely committed. Um, somebody who has a certain degree of flexibility because our children come in with different needs. Every child is unique. Um, and so somebody who's just kind of willing to work along with that child's specific challenges. Um, someone who really wants to be a positive influence on a child's life for the long haul. Um, like I stated, we have a lot of teens in care and a lot of times those teens don't necessarily have connections that regular teenagers out in the community would have. So as you're turning 17, 18, becoming a young adult, a lot of times where other children could go back home if they needed to or reach out to a mom, a dad or aunt or an uncle if they needed to, these children may not necessarily have those connections. So we're looking for people who would be open to being a support for our youth even after the foster care journey has ended. Mm. Can you talk to us a little bit about, so if, if someone's listening and they're like, okay, yes, this feels like me, what is the process um, from to actually get licensed as a parent with Portsmouth? Well, the first step would be to reach out to me and then uh, submit an inquiry. And I could get, I have a very nice informational packet that I can get out to everyone. Um, we will want you to come to an informational session over at Portsmouth Department of Social Services, but we will pretty much give you the basics and the groundwork about what the foster care system is about. And then after that, we will get you registered for pride classes, which um, that's the pre-service courses that are required for anyone to become a foster parent. I so when about how long classes, does it... I'm sorry, about how long does it take um, to become licensed? The process normally takes around four months from start to finish. And after the licensing process, um, you know, a, a person might stay open for a little while before they get a placement. And once they get a placement, what kind of supports are in place from Portsmouth to help make that placement successful? I presume we're hoping that when a child gets placed, they stay there the entire time that they're in foster care until they find their permanency. So how do you support that? That is absolutely our goal, Ms. Bullock, to have, our goal is first placement, last placement. We don't like to see our children bounce around if at all preventable. Um, so some of the supports that we do have in place, we have monthly foster parent training sessions, which also serve as support groups for our foster parents. We encourage our parents to network with one another and build relationships amongst themselves, um, just so that they can reach out to someone who's also going through the fostering experience if they need to. We have a lot of foster parents um, approved with us currently who are veterans in this. They've been doing it for a very long time and are willing to be very supportive of some of our newly approved families. So they are an awesome resource. 
they also have the support of myself as the resource families coordinator as their first point of contact if anything is you know going wrong i would definitely step in to advocate for a family that's wonderful because i think you know we all realize that raising children takes a village but specifically for the foster care population, it takes a very big village. These children come from histories of trauma, if nothing more than the, the tra trauma of being separated from their families, and often much more than that, a, a history of neglect or abuse, or both. And so wrapping around these kids and loving them um, takes a lot. It takes a lot of support. And I love that you bring your foster parents together because foster families, I'm, I'm a foster parent myself, we're different than your typical family that has doesn't have, you know, the constellation of families around us, right? We've got yeah. foster parents and birth parents and and support systems that, um, you know, are are extensive and unusual. And navigating that and having some camaraderie in that and people that really just kind of understand and hold, can hold space with you when you need it is really important. I love that. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Shannon, is there an option for adoption throughout the fostering process? Absolutely. There's always a foster to adopt track um, that is available for our youth whose goal is adoption. That's wonderful, too. And I know that often teenagers um, are not, not the first thought on people's mind for adoption, but these kids need permanency, particularly, I'd say, more in the teenage years, right? Because if they're in foster care over a long period of time as teenagers, they're likely to be disconnected from everyone. So the thought of adopting a teen is pretty, is pretty special and pretty important and can change their whole world, right? Absolutely. Like we spoke about earlier, just the opportunity for a child to have those connections and those supports that they can fall back on as they go through the experiences that young adults and teenagers typically go through is monumental for them. And a lot of times that's what our older children in care are missing. They don't have family members that they can pick up the phone and call when something goes wrong. I'm not sure about you ladies, but I know that when I was 17, 18, 19, there were many times that I had to call on my dad or call on another relative for support. And we just want to see our children have those same supports available to them. Mm. Shannon, I would love, I'm sure um, there's people who get a little bit afraid, right? Like I think fear is the biggest thing stopping people from fostering. And even when we talk about teenagers, right? We're like, oh no, this is a traumatized child. This might not be safe. Can you talk a little bit about the kind of precautions you take when it comes to matching um, youth with families to ensure that they are in places that um, can properly handle um, what's coming in. And then on the other side of that, kind of like the humanity of the fact that like, these are kids <laughs> with hearts and there is joy and there are like happy moments throughout this process as well. Mm -hmm. You're absolutely correct. I do encounter a lot of families that say that they are scared off by the idea of working with a teenager. Teenagers can be scary, I do understand. Um, however, I encourage every family to consider every child on a case by case basis because unfortunately, a lot of our youth appear a lot scarier on paper than they actually are through experience. Sometimes as these children go through the foster care journey, they pick up a lot of different labels. Um, and I think that people can sometimes get caught up in the labels as opposed to the humanity underneath like you spoke about. So just encouraging them to kind of look at those things that are underneath. And at the same time, we do recognize that some of a some of our children do have issues that, you know, are serious and that do definitely need to be considered as we work towards matching them with the family. So we are doing our best to look at the needs of the children in comparison to the specific strengths and qualities of the families that we are considering to make sure that everybody involved has a positive and healthy experience. We don't That's want to inflict trauma on our children or on our families as we right. match them together. Right. I think it's so important just to remember that, like, that's part of the gift of having the village and the team is that you're looking at the full picture and doing your best to pair in ways that you think will be most successful for everyone involved. And we can never guarantee that because everyone involved is humans and we don't know what's going to happen. So that coming back to the flexibility and that, you know, quality of the foster parent to be able to meet the child where they are and figure it out as they go just seems so important. Mm 
Mm-hmm. And I will say, as a foster parent, watching these children go from a state of mistrust to attachment and trust and security is a is a blossoming flower that is like no other. It is it is magic, and it's why people come and do foster care for year after year, even when children go home to to birth family and the heartbreak associated with that, the magic of giving that amount of love to a child in their their moment of deepest need is incredible and watching them respond to that. So thank you so much, uh, Shannon, for sharing with us about Portsmouth. Um, about all the wonderful things that you do for for people that are interested and moved um, to to do this um, tell us how they can get a hold of you they can reach me by telephone the number to the agency is 757-405-1800 and I am actually option three from the main menu so they can get me that way or they can reach me by email at shannon.mcfadden at dss.virginia.gov, and I will respond either way. Perfect. Thank you so much, Shannon. Thanks for being with us, and thank you for doing this work in our community. Thank you for having me. Thank you. And a big thank you for listening. Foster Care Aware is all about spreading the word about how we can help the kids who are in care in whatever capacity works for you. Tidewater Friends of Foster Care is here to help support you through the journey. Whether you want to be a foster parent, volunteer, donor, or advocate, head on over to fostercareaware.org slash next steps to learn more.